Oh, Jesus, we just sang about how you loved us, how great your love for us is. Oh, Jesus, I pray that as we look here for a few minutes at how you demonstrated that love, that you would grant us clarity in understanding you and seeing you precisely as you should be seen, that we would understand you, we would love you, we would revere you as our Lord and our Master, and we do pray this in your name. Amen. Well, this is the time in our service where we take some time to remember Jesus. It's a time for Christians to celebrate the work that Jesus did on their behalf at the cross. And so today we're going to be looking at a passage that shows us where the Christian obtains the righteousness that they need to be in a right relationship with God. So if you have your Bibles with you, would you turn with me to Galatians chapter 2? We're going to be looking at verses 15 and 16 together. Paul wrote his letter to the churches in Galatia because Judaizers had come into that region and they were teaching that a Gentile must obey the Jewish law in order to be a part of the family of God. And separately, Peter had traveled to that region and he had begun to fellowship with Gentile converts to Christianity. This including eating together with them. But when the Judaizers arrived, Peter withdrew from fellowship with these Gentile Christians And he did that mostly out of fear of the Jews. Our passage today is Paul's recall of the conversation that he had with Peter to help Peter understand and see how he had lost sight of the righteousness that is imputed on the basis of faith in Jesus. So as we look at our passage, let's observe a couple of things. First, in verse 15, we want to notice the privileged position that the Jew has. And then second, in verse 16, we want to see how those Christian Jews responded in light of that privilege. So Paul writes to the churches in Galatia, We are Jews by nature and not sinners from the Gentiles. Nevertheless, knowing that a person is not justified by the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus, even we believed in Christ Jesus, so that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law, since by works of the law no flesh will be justified. So in verse 15, Paul reminds Peter of the privilege of those Jewish people. The Jew was a Jew by nature, meaning that God had chosen the Jewish people to be his own personal possession. Moses explained this to Israel at the second giving of the law as Israel was positioned to enter the promised land on the east side of the Jordan River. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6, Moses says this to Israel. He says, you are a holy people to Yahweh your God. Yahweh, your God, has chosen you to be a people for his personal possession out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. So Israel's privilege was that they were actually God's own personal possession. But even with this privilege and this close proximity to God, the Jews still had no means of their own of obtaining salvation from their sin. So Paul then takes Peter to the Christian Jews' response to that privilege that they have. You see it right there in the middle of verse 16. The Christian Jew believed in Jesus Christ. He believed in Christ Jesus. They believed in Messiah Jesus. They had faith in Christ. They had a faith that convinced them that Jesus was indeed the Messiah and that he alone satisfied every single condition of God's holy law. They also believed that because Jesus was without sin, He and he alone was the atoning sacrifice for them through which their sins could be forgiven. They understood that clearly. And this is God's design for how a person is saved from their sin. So, Christian, consider this about Jesus as you remember him today. In a moment, the men are going to come and distribute the elements, the bread and the cup. When the elements come to you, remember that Jesus himself met every condition of God's righteous and holy law. And this qualified him to be the innocent atoning sacrifice on your behalf. And when your part is prepared, take the elements on your own. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ in this way, you don't acknowledge that you need Jesus' perfect righteousness credited to you in order to be acceptable before God, please know first that we're very thankful that you're here with us today. Very thankful that you've chosen to join us. 
but know that communion is for those who've trusted Christ for the righteousness they need to be in a right standing before God. Would you take a look at the end of verse 16? Paul writes that by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified. When Paul is speaking of flesh there, he's speaking about every single person on this earth throughout all of human history. And he's saying that for every one of those people, which is all of us, their works don't give them the righteousness that God demands for them to be acceptable in his sight. I urge you, please don't leave today without talking to somebody about how you can obtain that righteousness for yourself. I'll be available after the service, out at the table in the front. The other elders will be around, or even talk with someone near you in the row here this morning. So men, please come and serve us, and uh, I'll come in a moment and close our time in prayer.